just because why has got two branches and a tail doesn't make it a mutant so get the scales off your mind's eyes and you will see what's just a lazy lizard hanging on a tree please don't ask me why my country's conscience will perpetually be questioned by the splitting lines of this letter why the seeds fractionally last at the bottom of the alphabetical scale yet this gives me hope that Nigeria go carry last like Z. Z for Zimbabwe, there are head bread sells for billions of Zimbabwean dollars, yeah, but please don't ask me why. Why we must not fail as a country, though it sounds dated or still like hope really afraid, but sees hope anyways, like fate. If you can remember the mustard tail, please don't ask me why. Why I'm still this hopeful, though I'll be ruled by some political oops, maybe dark heart heart than those boko crooks. Those ones up not haramming the nation in an anti-Western cause. I'll be using pro-Western toys. But please don't ask me why. Why empty vessels make the loudest noise. Yes, you can ask the wailing sirens of your governor's convoy. On that cheap road that leads to your house. If you've got a house over the road that leads to one. But please don't ask me why. Why the definition of a revolution ends on these rows and squares where Nigerian men with very shallow unction always attempt to outwit the fellow men like life was a race to the fall? And I wonder why we're so impatient in traffic and yet so patient with all this government mess. I wonder why we're so impatient in traffic and yet so patient with all this government mess. But please don't ask me why. Why the only thing that defines our reason for doing is ego. But I still ego like that self styled Mino who taught he had deceived the people. Now he hides in the shaming shadows of his own evil. But please don't ask me why. Why the hunchback did drown even with his primordial God? Because the truth is, when crude becomes God, civilization will be banished from the land and men will feast on men, even with pride. So please don't ask me why. Why at this point my voice pales in wicked resignation like I'm sick with my palpitation. But a wise man once told me, son, that the word is enough for the wise and blessed. And these verses I write will choke nonetheless. Provoke what they say is in vogue. And maybe I do not ride the range over evoke. It doesn't make me less blessed of a man, you know. No, please don't ask me why. Why I believe there's always a light at the end of every tunnel. Cause truth be told, we're only here for a moment. So own your life and live it. And believe this. Only God can define your true words. Please now, ask me why. This piece is titled, These Things You Do To Me. I was stalled in a lingering dilemma. I found you and what a revelation, this sweet sensation ebbing out of his creation, impulses of no limitations. Now I'm short of expressions. Eluded by my own imagination, I search for the right words to sing my intentions. With little strength in me to spare my subtle pride, I lay down and I'm bare. You're like the beauty of fresh drapery, exalted with the heady scent of pure poetry, the essence of this symphony. My little sweet songs I hope to sing to you to the day after forever. Rhythms and ripples, this thing that you do to me, this thing that you do to me that I want to sing to you in mother tongue and native affection, hoping you will understand me better. Because it was true when I said I would climb over that thick oak tree behind the headmaster's compound just to sit at your feet, my love, and do like your natives between interlaves in spoken word and tribal tongue. I will exclaim, Agba. Ananya, hoping to collect your impressed approval into this God I promise to guard with all my life. This thing that you do to me, this thing that you do to me that makes me call out to you in earnest. Afurunginanya, Ololufemi, Nasoki. This thing that you do to me that makes me call out to you. Ihiotukum, Imami, Ufedomi. This thing that you do to me that I only hope you drink deep into his word or have to dig deeper into his word to fetch you water worthy for your tongue. This thing that you do to me that reminds me that I'm the son of a king and you're the daughter of this same king and you were rocked from my side while I was fast asleep. So when I woke up and I found you, I knew it was you and I was far from confused. This thing that you do to me. Thank you. So I wrote this piece um, for the presidential inauguration. It's titled, Is This the Moment? 
Is this the moment we've all been waiting for? For the heart of Africa to beat again. The sun rises, the eagle takes flight, and I hear drum beats of promise sounding across the land. And I ask, is this the moment we've all been waiting for? To wake up at dawn without news of another bomb blast fast and bring back our girls chant was a thing of the past where mothers are reconciled with their daughters and our sons do not run off to diaspora because the last news I heard from Indonesia still was woeful and gloom. So I ask, will today be that moment we've all been waiting for? That the wailings of political sirens will sound so low we can all hear the voice of the streets. And we can walk at night without fear for a flight and enjoy the sanctity of worship places without the presence of armed men in plain sight and a defense with the creator's might. And I ask, could this be the moment we've all been waiting for? That our refinery's light will shine so bright, oiling the life of a nation's drive. And we go back to innocence, taking our place as Africa's pride, where corruption is given a fatal blow. And the criteria for me being your friend has nothing to do with my tribe. Where change is not just the flicking of traffic lights, but the full conviction of a Nigerian's mind. That our gallant soldiers will serve with honor and be honored. And love first was for country and not the selfish self. And getting a job in the civil service had nothing to do with my tribe. And I didn't have to know that man or the other man for me to live my humble dreams. So I ask, will this be the moment we've all been waiting for? That the definition of our collective is neither clan nor region. Where hard work had a face that didn't look like corruption's twin. Where Nigerians would act with a sense of common good and would have to jump queues at stabbing filling stations to prove they were all street smart. Could it be the moment we've all been waiting for? That our youths would not trade stock on city traffic with patch flip flops and the cost of school fees would not drive my sister to sell her body for bread. Well, the difference between justice and impunity was as clear as day, and I wouldn't have to fold my fist at the next police post to end a thoroughfare. And I ask, could this be the moment we've all been waiting for? Where the Naira will stand at par, shoulder to shoulder with other world currencies. And Nigerians will walk tall with their head high with all pride. And I ask, could this be the moment we've all been waiting for? That the Queen's yes men nodded to the puzzle of a Niger area is proof of belief. That we've stood 54 years and counting is proof of triumph. The triumph of the Nigerian spirit. So history calls upon us in brevity from Aguiris Junta to Balewa's exit of a polarized north and south of troops and boots, blood and guns, pelted flesh, smacking in disgust from oil booms to price slums of a Colonel's revolt, an eastern high on secession call of a general stand to go on with one Nigeria of Mutala's mother, Shagari's reign, and Obasanjo's federation. Could this be the moment we've all been waiting for, where at last the hopes of a nation, once wrapped in the shroud of Amadou Bello's turban, Awolowa's rhetoric, and Azikwe's eloquence, to come alive this day in the full colors of a nation made of green, white, and green, I dare to ask with all hearts, let today be that moment you and I have been waiting for. Thank you.